Oh, g'day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought and today we're going to be looking at how to set up your suspension. Okay, so I'm filming this about two or three days outside of my trip heading up north. I've just had the patrol running for maybe a week now, so if you're watching this and thinking a bit confused, like, oh, this thing's already kind of finished, what's going on behind you? But that's because we're in the midst of setting this thing up. So what I wanted to do is make a bit of a video of how to set up your suspension at home, and then I'm gonna be taking it to the shop. The boys at Malaga Suspension are gonna tweak it and tune it up, give it the wheel alignment it needs, and just run through everything underneath there. But there is a basic set of adjustments you can make in your own backyard. But before I wanna take you through all that stuff, first you need to understand what each component of the suspension system does. So I'll run you through that now. By the way, this is a live axle four wheel drive. You've got a diff at the front, a diff at the back. If your vehicle has a independent front suspension, it's, this kind of information is not gonna to apply to you as such because there's quite a different setup there. But for you guys that have twin live axles, a diff front and rear, this will be good information for you there. So starting from the back, you're gonna have a five link set up. That means there's five bars holding that diff in place. First, starting with the pan hard rod. That's the one that sits diagonally right at the rear there. What that does is set your diff from going side to side. And what you wanna do is set that up so when it's at normal ride height, you're not gonna have any left or right overhang because what that'll cause is the vehicle to like pretty much crab walk down the road. So in front of that, you're gonna have your upper and lower control arms. When you're doing a lift kit, what I've done is gone plus 10 millimeters longer on the lower control arms. That's because when the diff drops, it actually pulls in and tucks in towards the front of the car. So that compensates for that going the four inch lift. They're fixed and they're strengthened because they're the superior arms. They're a lot stronger than the standard. A bit heavier, but you want that strength there. And the top, the upper control arms, I've gone adjustables. Now, both the pan hard and the upper control arms are adjustable on my setup, so I can tweak that left and right motion of the diff, but I can also adjust the upper control arms, which actually changes the roll of the diff. Now, I'll take you through that later with how to set it up, but pretty much those four components there hold the diff in place, and then the fifth being the pan hard holds the diff in side to side motion. And so the rear is pretty simple. Now, looking at the front end, it's a little more complex. Now, what I've got is your radius arms is what pretty much holds the diff in place. Now that pretty much fixes what, what the up control arm does on the rear with changing the rotation there. The lower radius arms on the front is what sets that. Now I've gone drop boxes, so I've actually lowered those radius arms down to bring back that diff rolling to the rear because when you do a lift kit, your front diff wants to roll forward. So the front also has an adjustable pan heart as well and that sets the side to side motion again. So you want to keep that central. But other than that, there's not really a lot of adjustments that can be made with regards to the front end. Um, the only other thing is the steering components, which I'm going to have a quick tweak through as well. What you've got is a tie rod and drag link. Now the tie rod, that ties the two wheels together and that's what gives you your wheel alignment. So you want them to be dead on, so both wheels are pointing dead straight at any given angle. Then the front arm is the drag link. And what that does is connect your steering to your steering box. Now that's the big one that goes across the front there. It's also adjustable. So once you've got your toe correct and your wheels are aligned, then you adjust that drag link to get your steering wheel central so you're not going down the road with the steering wheel on the piss. So that's the other adjustment that can be made. In the backyard, you, you can't really do that. It needs to be to the millimeter, but I'm just gonna set it up, give it a rough idea using a tape measure just so I can get it on the road. Um, so what we're gonna do now is pretty much set up the pan hards. I'm not gonna really have much of a play around with the upper control arms because that needs to be bang on. It's to do with your pinion angle. So I'll, I'll talk you through a bit through that in a second, but it's something that I want the shop to take care of because it needs, it's quite a critical um, measurement there. All right, so the first thing I want to do now is pretty much pick a reference point, which, be, which will be the edge of this tire here. Oh, okay, all paint's coming off. And then I pretty much want to measure to the same point on both sides. So I might go to the edge of this shock tower here. I can see where the cone comes out and we'll measure to the edge of the tire. It looks like, whoa, changed my mind. 
I'm actually going to hold this bar up against the tyre. And now measure to that 42 and a half. Over here, we're looking 41 and a half. So it's got to come this way, about a half a centimetre, about five mil. What I need to do, I don't know if you can see me there, but pretty much pull this pin out of the pan hard and I'm going to wind her out maybe. So yeah, we want to go out to get five mil extra on this. So I think that's what it was. And a lot of times when you do this adjustment, you have to give the car a bit of persuasion to come into the right position. So I might get a screwdriver and just try and push the car across to line up that bolt. There we go. 36 and 36. Well, that's bang on, it's good enough for me. We we'll get the boys to check it, tighten this thing up now and do the back. The next day. Alright guys, so I've got the rig on the hoist behind me. What the boys have done today is just give the suspension a once over. Um, we're talking like I'm two days out of going up north right now, so talk about leaving it to the last minute. But there were some issues with the steering. It was a bit of shaker, like 60 k's. Turns out my kingpin bearings in the swivel hubs there, uh, one of the shims had to come out and that tightened that up there because you've got to have a certain amount of preload and that wasn't the case. So. Now that's sorted, it's driving a lot better. Now I'm doing a quick little wheel alignment. This will get it down to, I think it's 0.1 of a millimeter. And then the back needs a bit of an adjustment with the pinion angle there, because what you want is your transfer case, the face of the yoke to match the diff yoke. And because of the lift, it starts pulling your diff in and the angle is going to change slightly. So the upper control arms are adjustable, which means I can tweak that back to where it needs to be. And then this thing should ride like a champ. All right, so I've managed to catch Corey here from Alaga Suspension. I just want to have five minutes because I get asked this all the time about guys that give me a message, oh, I'm doing a lift on my four-wheel drive, what do I need to do? And a lot of guys don't realise that when you lift your four-wheel drive to a certain height, there's other adjustments and things you need to take into consideration when doing so. So firstly, what kind of lift can you do um, before you have to start playing with things like spring-wise and that? We do, say, so generally you can go up to three-inch of uh, lift depending on what shocks you want to run. Um, we do basically like a kit where we say do a three inch kit with which is four springs, four shocks, do two to three inch shocks with caster correction bushes. Um, if you go longer than a three, uh, a three inch shock then you've got to start doing brake lines and stuff like uh, that, you know, um, panard rods, extended bump stops. Yeah, so I'm sitting at four inches, so for the four yep. inches and above, what kind of do you need to get on top of just your springs and shocks to make it all sit right? Basically, you sort of got to go, especially at that sort of height, you've got to do everything um, if you wanted to drive and perform best. Um, like I said, you, you basically what you've done is, is, is everything like um, that, that's required. I recommend, uh, especially with cast and correction forms, um, I recommend either going like a, a, a super flex arm or a, you know an aftermarket arm. If you've got the bucks to do the arm, it's definitely worthwhile for drivability and obviously flex. That um, radius arm still correct? Right, yeah. yeah. Um, extended or adjustable panard rods, extended brake lines, um, extended lower trailing arms, um, adjustable uppers, um, the extended bump stops, you know what I mean? Um, Nowadays a lot of the new 4Bs have IFS on the front, yep. so for those guys what's sort of different with the front end when you do a lift? It's a bit different to the live axles in there. 100% yeah, the IFS is obviously a, a totally different ball game again. Um, obviously you've got having CV, uh, CV shafts that throw a sort of bit of a spanner in the works. Uh, most of your cars is generally two inch um, before you start you've got to do diff drop kits and upper control arms. Um, you just get limited with what happens is people, when they go over two inch they run a long travel, a really long travel strut and it causes them to droop so much which is what you want but it starts to put the CVs into bind, uh, maxes out your upper ball joint. And drag the, the wheels in a bit eh? Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah generally um, to do it properly with that, like same sort of thing as we've got budgets for people doing different lifts um, and basically, you know what I mean, to sort sort of what they're doing for their application, yeah. but okay. to do it right, you've just got to spend bucks going uh, when you go up high to do it properly yeah, to make yeah. everything work. That's it. Yeah. Um, now, once all that's sorted, 
getting prepared for driving basically and setting up. Yep. I know for me, I'm going away tomorrow yep. for four weeks. Sorry to yep. drop that on you, but the <laughs> legends here good. sorted me out. They made me squeeze me in. <laughs> so yeah, with setup wise, what sort of you want? What are you doing there? Like, what are you looking at when you're about to go on a big trip and to make sure that you've, you've got under control? Depending on what you've done, if you've just fitted a kit, a brand new kit, and you've got it, you've done some cages. It's worth doing a full nut and bolt check over it. If the kit's been there for a while and you're happy with it, or if you want to check your alignment, jack it up. I said check your wheel bearings. Um, you know, check all your, your bushes and everything like that, your tire ends, um, you know, make sure nothing's, there's uh, no hidden uh, hidden yeah. gremlins there that are yeah, going to catch Yeah, it's good to get a out, second so. set of eyes as well. Yeah. I, I know one of the guys picked up my front sway bar was actually on the wrong way around because yeah. I don't have the diesel anymore, there was a little cutout for the exhaust pipe and because it wasn't sitting there, I thought it was for the drive shaft, but it turns out it was the wrong way around. So having that second set of eyes made sure that I wasn't going to cause any trouble down the road. Yep. So thanks Corey no for worries, sorting mate. out thanks the guys, they're getting Cheers. pretty close. Yep. If you're going to go on a big trip, make sure you guys pop down and see the boys at Malaga Suspension. Cheers, they are the boys to go to for four wheel drive stuff in Perth. So I'm going to get out of here, I've got to start packing, I'm going away in a couple of hours. So I'll see you next time guys, take it easy. <laughs>